Hello friends, I am Dr. Surbhi Kapoor, Consultant Geneticist, Hegde Hospital. Today we will discuss on a topic, Consagnity. How Consagnity increases the risk of genetic diseases or miscarriages. Consagnity, when you marry in a close relation, when you marry within the relatives, within the family. Consagnity, when you marry within your own relatives, either first degree, second degree, or you marry in the same community, or you follow the same genetic tree, in which you might have common, in, in which there might be a common ancestors in your fourth generation. So when you marry in your close relations, when you marry in a close community, there is no sh the sh genes and the DNA is being genetic information is being pooled within the family. There is no exchange of genetic information or genetic uh, de genetics is being exchanged with the outside members. So in case of uh, couples who are into consagnous marriages, sometimes there is a higher probability as compared to normal population that the couple can be carrier for the same recessive genetic disorder. Recessive genetic disorder means when that disorder is not expressed in a couple but he has but the couple he or she is at an increased risk of transferring that disease to the child for every gene we have two copies of alleles recessive means when one copy of allele is working normally functioning normally and other is affected so when the same and when you marry in the same pool, genetic pool, when you marry in the same family, there is a higher probability here the couple, the partner can also be the carrier for the same recessive genetic mutation. So in that case, the couples are not affected, the parents are not affected because the other copy of allele gene is functioning normally, producing hormones normally. But there is a higher pro there is a probability that they might share that affected allele with the offspring when egg and sperm mate sharing of genome happens 50 percent genome come from the father side 50 percent genome comes from the mother side during that sharing of genome there is a probability that couple might share their normal allele to the child 25 percent chances are there there is a probability that one couple might share the normal allele and another can share an affected allele again the child will be normal so there is a 50 percent chance that a child can be carrier 25 percent chance that the child can be normal but there is a 25% chance also that the child can be affected because the couple might share both the affected alleles to the child. So this sharing of genome happens under the nature, nobody has a control on it. In case of a couple sharing this 25% risk or uh, sharing this affected allele to the child, there is a 25% risk of having a genetic disorder in a child. This genetic disorder in a child may might affect in a different ways, might affect the fetal development of the child, might uh, result into an abnormal pregnancy in a child. So we can uh, in a child the sharing of genome or the sharing of genome in a com in a common family can increase the probability of having a mutated allele in the couples that can be passed on to the child. So in case of couples who are into consagnous marriages or the couples who have a history in consagnous marriages are having a history of recurrent miscarriages or having any affected child in the family should opt for preconceptional genetic counseling should opt for preconceptional genetic screening in which a genetic counselor can help couple to find out if they are at any increased risk of having genetic disease by looking out by drawing their family pedigree checking out their family history up to two up to three generations two or three generations we cannot directly go and find out the what are the uh, risk factors in our ancestors so only way we can minimize the risk of transferring a child to the transferring a disease to the child is to screen our genome so if you if a genetic counselor feels that you are at an increased risk or there is a very close consagnity or multiple consagnous marriages in the family in that case a genetic testing is advised to the couple and uh, the report itself speaks if you are a carrier for any particular genetic disease that is pathogenic and there is an increased risk of transferring to the child in that case you, uh, couples can make an informed decision to plan their pregnancy. They can plan their pregnancy via IVF with the pre-genetic testing of embryos. They can plan their pregnancy either in a natural way and get the prenatal testing done for that particular mutated gene to minimize the risk of transferring it to the next generation. Nowadays, many consagnous couples couples are pretty uh, people are well educated in this scenario 
they are opting for preconceptional genetic counseling they are opting for preconceptional genetic screening to minimize the risk to understand the risk if they are potential carrier for any genetic disorder that can affect the child so in case of consanguineous marriages where couples are suffering for, from any abnormal child or suffering from any recurrent miscarriages or facing anomalies scan, abnorm, anomalies in their uh, second trimester scan should opt for preconceptional uh, genetic counseling and genetic screening to understand the reasons and to minimize the risk of having a child with a genetic disorder thanks everyone hope this session was pretty inf informative for you all thank you